Hey, everyone, Alexis. Good. How are you doing, Silas? Good. You know what I'm going to ask you? What? That's right. Have you? No. Yeah, good afternoon, Julia. Yeah. And then Julia, you say, and how about you, Silas? How are you today? And how about you, Silas? How are you today? Sorry. There you go. That made Mr. Strong. That made my spring break. We haven't even started yet. I know, but now I'll be happy. Also. I'm going to end on a good note. All right, I got to join. Don't you hate it when you're charging something and then you realize the other end is plugged in? I was charging my Apple pencil and then I was supposed to go get it and I realized the other end isn't plugged in. You gonna watch any movies, Silas? Probably not. Do you like movies or no? No. I've slowly gotten hooked, not that they're great movies by like any stretch of the means, but the Marvel movies, just nice escapism. They're not going to win Academy Awards, but.
I'm muted. No, I'm not muted. How are you doing, Albie? Good. Good to hear. How you doing, Mason? Hey, Rauch, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing all right. You going to do anything fun over spring break? No, nah, sadly, just homework. Well, you won't have too much chemistry. You're only going to have like 50 problems. Wait, did I say 50? I meant five. I let some people in here. So while you guys are waiting, um, you can um, get your uh, Google Sheets ready. All right, that is the bell. So um, let me um, do, 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 do. Um, so let me just give a few announcements before we jump into doing the Boyle's Law Lab. So um, I'm almost done grading the periodic table labs. So if you balance the reaction wrong, I put the correct way to balance it on there. And um, if you balanced it correct, then there's nothing written on the paper except a zero in the corner, meaning zero wrong. So if you don't have a lot of red marks on your lab, it's because you're, you did it right. Um, remember, you can retake the quantum theory test. If you want to retake the quantum theory test, spring break might be a good time to do that. Um, also, if you are um, uh, missing some labs, you know, um, go ahead and get those those in because all of that uh, will help your grade. So uh, spring break is a good time to, to catch up. Um, let's see. Um, other than that, I can't think of anything else. You're going to have five problems to do for homework over spring break. Okay. The lab we're going to get done in class today. All right. So any questions before we um, uh, dive in for the good of the cause? All right. So, uh, so for those of you at home, why don't you go ahead and open up your Google Sheets? This is what we've got. This is where we left off yesterday. We showed how to do equations in your count in your spreadsheet.
Let me just see if there's some people in the waiting room. So, um, today we're going to make the graphs, all right? Um, so, in order to make the graph, the first one we're going to do is pressure, uh, pressure versus volume. So, to make the graph, you uh, click on that box, and then to highlight the data, you touch the little blue dot and drag it down and highlight all your data. Okay, so highlight all your data. And then you're going to press the plus sign in the upper right hand corner. And you'll see chart. And we're going to touch chart. And then we get that. Now we don't want to do a line graph, okay? Um, and this is the reason why we're doing this stuff so that you can use this skill for any science class. Sometimes people mistakenly think, oh, I want to do a line graph. Um, a line graph on spreadsheets is basically connecting the dots. You know, remember when you used to, in elementary school, Alexis, you give you the numbers, you can connect the numbers and it'd be like a, you get a picture. Um, that's kind of what this line graph does. We don't want that. Um, we want what's called, how does the X variable relate to the Y? That's called a scatter. So we actually wanna do, so if you click on type, we actually wanna do a scatter. Now I'm gonna, you know, just a reminder, I'm going to, um, I gotta have the chat up on my on my computer so that I can see if people have questions. So anything you put in the chat room is visible to everyone in the room. So taking a look at this, um, what uh, what type of relationship is this? Is it a straight line? So our choices are what linear, geometric, exponential, and um, inverse. Mr. And, oh, am I muted? Is it inverse? It is inverse. So, and I'll show you a little bit later, like how you can tell for sure, but it sure looks like an inverse relationship to me. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and label this and make this look college worthy. So I'm going to click back on type and then go to where it says titles. So the title is going to be, what are we doing? Pressure versus volume. Then we have to label the axis. Now, not just the name of that, what's on it, but the unit. Now, um, don't, don't do what I'm gonna do because this will mess up your, your graph. But I want you to think, you should always do this, think before you label your axes. Because just because you write something on it doesn't mean that's it. Like if I write down uh, on the Y axis or on the X axis, I write, Mr. Strauss's 
weight. Okay, just because I write that on the x-axis doesn't mean that's the that's what it is. I mean, you can write anything you want on an axis, but that doesn't make that's what it is. So right now I'm looking at the x-axis and the x-axis goes from like zero to 300, okay? So if I look at my data, what goes from zero to 300 or, or at least up to 300, the volume. So that's how I know volume is on the x-axis, not because I write the word volume, but because I look at my data. So unfortunately by clicking off, I got to start all over again, but you guys don't have to because you did what I said. Okay, chart. Scatter, title, okay, so the x-axis is volume, and then what we have to make sure is that we put the unit, not just volume, is it Meters cubed, yards cubed, centimeters cubed, centimeters cubed, or you could put milliliters to the same thing. I'm just going to put milliliters because I don't like using a carrot. So you could put centimeters cubed or milliliters because they're identical. And then go ahead and label the y axis. This is the same for everybody kilograms per, oh no, it's not, yeah. We did in kilograms per centimeter squared. Okay, so go ahead and label your axes. And then once you have it all labeled, then you have to press the little green check mark in the upper left hand corner. Okay, so once your graph is all good and you're happy with it and everything looks great, then you press the check mark, the green check mark in the upper left hand corner. And then bam, your graph appears and it's all nice. I might drag it down out of, out of the way of my spreadsheet though. Just sorry, I'm just playing around with it there. So pressure versus volume is inverse. All right, um, how about the next graph? The next graph, we're gonna do one over volume. Well, I'm just gonna see if there's anybody in the waiting room. Nope, we're all here. All right, so click on one over volume, drag the dot. And then go ahead, Albie, and create another chart. Make sure it's scatter. But this time, the title is going to be pressure versus one over volume. 
And once we've got all this stuff done, then you can just share the document with me. Okay, you don't need to upload it to, to Canvas. That's the beauty of Google Sheets is you can just share it with me. Now what's going on the Y or the X axis? It's not volume anymore. It's one divided by volume. And the units are still the same, milliliters. And then the vertical axis is pressure, still pressure. Per centimeters squared. And then once you've got that all done, then press the little check mark. And then go ahead and share that document with me. Once you got it all done like that. Mr. Stubbs? Yep. Uh, where do I find the titles? Sure, just a second. So the titles, so when you make the chart, it's got type, legend, titles. And you know, you can always share this with me like later today or sometime during spring break. So if you need help with this, I can I can help you. Um, but once you have it, then you can just go ahead and share it with me. So what does this relationship look like? Looks like linear. It's not a perfect linear, but it's somewhat linear, okay? Now, unfortunately, you can't do the next thing that we're gonna do. Um, the app doesn't allow you to put it in the trend line, which is too bad because the trend line is one of the most important things. But I can do it on Google Sheets using the computer. So I'm just gonna show you how to do it. But why don't we go ahead and answer the questions on the worksheet? Because um, we can answer numbers one, two, and three right now. And if you don't know where to find the worksheet, you go into Canvas. And go into gas laws. So in gas laws at the very bottom is the Boyle's Law Lab, and then you can download the worksheet. And the first question is what variables will hold constant during the lab? So what didn't change during the lab besides your underwear? Volume and temperature. Temperature stayed the same, right? because it's, we started at room temperature, we ended at room temperature. But the volume, didn't the volume of the gas change, Albie? Didn't we change the gas by 20 degrees? Yeah, it's mass and temperature, so I... Yep, mass would be another one, like the mass of the gas, the, the actual amount of gas inside the chamber didn't change. And I can't remember if 
you know, if I showed you um, the remote learners at home, but we have this, this cylinder here, and then we compressed the gas inside it. And as you compressed the gas, we read what happened to the pressure off that gauge. So it was a pretty simple lab. You compress, compress the cylinder, measure the pressure. Then go ahead and answer question number two and question number three while I switch over to the computer, okay? So go ahead and answer question number two and question number three. And Mrs. Strauss, you're muted. Mr. Strauss, uh, your mic's muted right now. Can you not hear us? I don't think so.
Bro. I think he forgot to connect his audio. Oh, yeah, that's probably what's happening. Great. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's connected to the audio. I just, he's just like not listening. We literally just went the whole lesson without listening to it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, this thing's not due till like the 23rd, so. Mr. Strauss. Hear us. All right, Mr. Strauss. Here we go again. Sorry, guys. We're doing this again. Maybe I should have Julia or Alexis teach the class. <laughs> Let's go through that again real quick. Sorry, I did this twice. Man, I hate myself. All right, guys. Let's go back here. So, um. What I was trying to say was that for number four, if you look at these numbers, they're pretty much constant. Okay. So under normal pressures, P times V seems to be a constant. When you've got really big volumes or very high pressures, it doesn't seem to be a constant anymore. Okay. So number four is under normal pressures, P times V is a constant. Number five, 
was asking, what is the slope? If you look at the slope right there, 129, that is somewhat close to our constant. So the slope should be the constant. And then for number six, what is the R squared for the second graph? And what I was saying was that the R squared is like E harmony. It tells you how good of a match it is. So for like graph number one, if I chose graph number one to be linear, well, I don't end up with a very good match. I have a 72% match for a straight line. So then I try something else. That's a 99% match. So the computer will calculate R squared for you to tell you how good of a match you are with that graph. Um, in statistics, you'll calculate it by hand. In science classes, we have the computer do it for us. Now for the second graph, I have a 96% match for linear and I've got a 82% match for exponential. So obviously I wanna go with the one that gives me the better match, 96% match, okay? So when you have a chance, you know, take a picture of your Boyle's Law Lab and upload it to uh, Canvas. You've already shared your Boyle's Law document with me, so you don't have to do that again. Um, but when you have a chance, upload your Boyle's Law Lab. And then Mr. we will um, go through the homework momentarily, okay? Those uh, problems on Charles Law. Mr. Strauss. Strauss. Strauss, you, you left us again. Anything else? Otherwise, I can go through this again for a third time or a fourth time. I can't. Can you show the data one more time? Mr. Strauss, I don't think you can hear us. I noticed. Yeah, I think you got to send it in the chat. Brian, you should have the, the data. I can hear you now. Hello? Can you hear me? All right. Bro. I'm gonna go back over to my iPad so we can go over the homework. All right, so let's go through those homework problems and jump over to Notability. All right. So Charles Law
Charles law is V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. And our first homework problem said our initial volume was 617 cubic centimeters. My initial temperature was nine degrees Celsius. Right away, go ahead and change it to Kelvin. Okay. So automatically, Antonio, whenever they have Celsius, just add 273. Our V2 is what we're trying to find. And then it says change the temperature to standard temperature. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius. So standard temperature is zero. But we still have to convert it. So the first thing you always do is write your data, Josh. Then you write your equation. And then you do the algebra. Okay, I'm teaching. It's more important to know the process than be able to do these Charles Law problems. I multiply both sides by T2. Solve the V2. Then plug in your numbers. So 273. And 617 divided by two eighty two Calvin's cancel units are centimeters cubed three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs. Everybody loves sig figs. And so I end up with 597 cubic centimeters as my answer. But you're not done with the problem yet, Gerald. Okay. What you have to do, Zane. The very last step is think. So, Zane, what happened to my temperature? Did it go up or down? Uh, it went down. My temperature went down. So if my temperature went down, what should happen to my volume? It should also go down. It should also go down. Did my volume go down? I started at 617. I ended at 597. It went down. Okay. Your last step is always to think. Just don't write down what the calculator says. You're smarter than a calculator. Then number 9A. We're going, our volume is in meters cubed, okay? Our T1 is 226 Kelvin. We don't know the V2. And our T2 is in Celsius. So go ahead and right away add the 273. Temperature must always be in Kelvin, Wopia but your volume can be in whatever unit you want, as long as it's consistent. If V1 is cubic centimeters, V2 is cubic centimeters. If V1 is liters, V2 is liters. That's the formula. Now, you should have done your homework, so you're just following along because you already have the work done in front of you. Um, so you shouldn't have to be copying down the work right now because 
I mean, it's better than nothing, but watching me do problems is kind of just like watching someone else play the violin. It doesn't mean that I know how to do it. So multiply both sides by T2. Then plug in your numbers. The Kelvin cancels with the Kelvin. That meters cubed as my units. Three sig figs, I get 3.80 cubic meters. But we're not done yet, Josh, because what's the last step? Think. So, what happened to my temperature, Josh? Bautista, are you there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. what'd you say? I'm sorry. What, uh, you, what happened to the temperature? It, uh, it increased. It increased. So what should happen to my volume? It should increase too. And did it? Uh, well... Yeah, I did. Okay, so you were good. You always got to do that last step, okay? So for this, for homework this weekend, you are going to do 15 problems on Boyle's Law. Now, Boyle's Law can be written a couple of ways. P times B is a constant. That's one way to write Boyle's Law. The other way to write Boyle's law is P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2. Did I say 15 or I meant five? Five, five problems over the spring break. Five problems, not 15, five. So let's now do a problem with Boyle's law. Now, Temperature has to be in Kelvin. Pressure and volume can be in whatever you want. It just has to be consistent, okay? So let's say um, a balloon at 225 cubic centimeters and 60 kPa is compressed to 50 cubic centimeters. What is the new pressure? So we've got a balloon at two, a balloon that's 225 cubic centimeters and 60 kPa. We're gonna compress the balloon, squeeze the balloon down to a volume of 50 cubic centimeters, what is going to be the new pressure? So usually we save the thinking till the very end, but we should be able to figure this out right now. So Brian, what's going to happen to my pressure on that balloon if I compress it? It's going to get smaller. Well, the balloon's going to get smaller for sure, but if you ever squeeze a balloon, oh, what's it's going, going to happen? Pop. The pressure goes up. Yeah. So the volume goes down but the pressure goes up. It's an inverse relationship. So temperature is a direct relationship. When volume goes, when temperature goes up, volume goes up. But pressure, it's inverse. Volume goes down, pressure goes up. So I write down my volume. Write down my pressure.
make that my new value. And now I want to find my new pressure. So always write down all your info. And then we're going to do our algebra. We're going to divide by P2. Then we plug our numbers in there, Silas. 60 KPA. Times two twenty five. Oopsie doodle. What I do wrong? I didn't. I'm trying to find P two. Got to divide by V two. Right. Got to get rid of the V two. I need P two by itself because that's what I'm solving for. That's another reason why you do the algebra first, because then you can see if you made a mistake. If you just start plugging numbers in, it's not gonna be obvious. But Silas right away was like, Mrs. Strauss, you're wrong. All right, let's divide this by V2. This time around, I got two sig figs, three sig figs, and three sig figs. So my answer will have two significant figures. So with two sig figs, I get 270 KPA. Uh, any questions on, on how to do that? Do you think you guys can do five of these this weekend? Blake? Actually, give me a thumbs up if you understood what I just did. I hate virtual teaching. <laughs> All right, so um, did the pressure go, did the uh, pressure go up? Yes, the pressure went up. Um, just to give you a, um, a comparison, remember there are three types of pressure units. There's atmospheres, there's KPAs, And then there are millimeters of mercury. So millimeters of mercury is for weather. And um, Alexis was telling me he was watching the weather report last night. And, and he said that the barometric pressure in Verona was 30.57 inches of mercury. So the weather report Told us the air pressure. These are just different units of pressure, just like you got pounds and kilograms and grams, you have different units of mass. You could have meters and yards, different units. So there are different units of pressure. So if we're talking weather, they use millimeters of mercury. 
if you live in Europe, but we don't live in Europe. We live in the United States. So we use inches of mercury. So that's the barometric pressure. Why do we care about the air pressure? Because if the air pressure changes, the weather is gonna change. So let's just convert our KPAs into atmospheres just for fun. So I'm gonna divide by 101, convert it into atmospheres. And I get 2.6 atmospheres. So atmospheres, like I said, is a good, easy comparison. So what you're saying, if it's 2.6 atmospheres, the pressure is two and a half times normal pressure on the earth. So you'd feel like you would at the bottom of a swimming pool, right? You can feel the weight of the water pushing on you. So if you felt this type of pressure, except it'd be a lot more um, pressure than the bottom of probably your ears would burst from this, this level of pressure. They, your eardrums would be pushed in. All right, one last problem. Stick with me here. We got 15 minutes left. See, I always do something like that, Milam, just to see if people are paying attention. Did you, did you notice I said there was 15 minutes left? All right, so, um, my volume changes. Um, liters to 68 liters. My initial temp is uh, 45 Kelvin. What is the new Going from 50 to 68. My initial temperature is 45 Kelvin. What do you think is the new temperature? By the way, Mason, that's really nice of you to volunteer to buy ice cream for the whole class when we get back. So right cool, down your, cool. you were listening, good. So our, our initial volume was 50 liters. It's changing to 68 liters. My initial temperature is 45. I wanna find my new temperature. So the equation we're going to use is Charles's law, right? V1 over T1 is equal to V2 over T2. Um, the only reason why I'm doing one more example problem of this is because I find that for whatever reason, if I'm using V and T instead of X and Y, you guys seem to forget all your algebra. I want to solve for T2. So Here's the mistake that people make, Zane. They divide, they divide by V2, 
That's not a problem. But then they do this. Yes, the V2 cancels, that's great. But the T2 is in the denominator. How the heck did it magically appear in the numerator? Bad algebra. Okay. The easiest way to get something out of the denominator and into the numerator is to flip it. Okay. What do I mean by that? One over two is equal to two over four. Flip it. Is that still a true statement? Yeah. So the easiest way to solve for T2 is to just flip it. So you can take your fractions and flip them and it's still a true statement. Then you can go ahead and multiply both sides by V2. And now you've got your V2 isolated. Now there are other ways you can do that algebraically, but the fastest way, the quickest way is to take a fraction and then to flip both sides. Okay. So you only have 50 problems to do this weekend. And um, I already uploaded it into Canvas. They are the Charles Law problems. And you're gonna be doing numbers, and I put it in there, numbers one, two, all right, three A and B, 4 A and B. So those six problems, I'll give you one more. Two's a goodie. Two's an oldie, but a goodie. So those six problems, okay? Um, again, if you wanna do a retake over spring break, that's good. If you have problems, email me, I'll set up a Zoom. I'm setting up a Zoom with some of my AP Chem students in the evening like at 9 p.m. because that's when they're awake. They only come out at night, AP Chem students. That's why they're so pale. They're kind of like Nosferatu. Um, what questions do you have at home right now? This is Strauss. Yep. Is the lab considered a homework assignment? No, labs are summative. All right. What other questions do you have? What is the homework called? It's called um, Charles Law, but um, if I go into the canvas, I'll double check here. Oh, it's actually, I just called it do one, two, three, A and B. And then the pictures of the homework problems are right there. So one, two, three. Oh, let's see. Any other questions at home? Is this class recorded on Canvas? It is. All right. Now, oh, I can upload this class to Canvas. Yeah, I don't, I, I record every class, but I don't upload it unless someone asks me to because it just takes up a lot of um, space. So, but I, I record everyone. I just, so I can upload it um, as soon as we get done here. Oh, I forgot to upload the AP Chem one. I'm glad you mentioned that. Any other questions? Well, this is good because there's enough time 
in the final three minutes for your friend and mine. Alexis has volunteered to sing his favorite songs from the musical Hamilton. Cats, the musical Cats, Phantom of the Opera. He's being modest. Oh shoot, we were muted. He started to sing and we were muted. Oh, God, darn it. Now he's too shy to start again. We'll have to do this again, maybe next week. So all of you have a wonderful spring break. And again, if you have trouble or questions, just feel free to email me, okay? All righty, thank you, Mr. Strauss. You have a good one. Yeah, I plan on So that's the so the weight of the filter flavor, right? Somewhere you should have weighed the filter paper and the precipitate. Okay. Yeah, or Yeah. On the second floor, they so 